Hello and welcome back to the final squeeze of today's Splash of Pain, where it's time for us to see our leading SAA artist, Jeremy Ford, gives his paper the perfect finish. Today, I'm going to show you how to stretch a piece of paper. Uh, some people uh, wonder, should you stretch paper or shouldn't you? Uh, if you don't stretch paper, does it matter? Uh, well, the thinner the paper, the more it will distort, uh, cockle or buckle. Uh, and a really good way of stretching paper that I often use is the, uh, 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 is the perfect paper stretcher. So uh, I've got a piece of uh, watercolour paper here. This is 140 pound weight or 300 gram weight. Uh, and this has been soaking for about 10, 15 minutes. I will give it at least five minutes to soak, but you can't over soak paper. I've left paper in the sink uh, for hours and hours and hours and forgot all about it and uh, come across it later on and it's been fine. So I don't think you can over soak paper. This has had about 10, 15 minutes, so I'll just get rid of the excess. And the, so the paper's still wet, and while the paper's wet, it expands and it's very flexible. So you put the paper, uh, sorry, the paper stretcher down like that and press down on it so that you get rid of any air bubbles. And because the paper's wet, it sticks to it like that. So just press down and fold along the edge a little bit like that and then trap the bottom edge like that and then you get your piece of flexible plastic. The sides of the, um, of the paper stretcher are grooved and uh, so this uh, plastic, flexible plastic, you just tap with a hammer or a mallet or something heavy like that, watch your thumbs and then you do the same on the other side. Make sure that's roughly in the middle. I always do it the back way because if you do it the other way around, you might miss and go down the front of your paper. So I always do it from behind. And then the same on the other two sides. This is so simple. If I can do it, anybody can do it. It's dead easy. And once you've done your first one, then it's even easier still. And then the same on that one. On the other side. And you've got a lovely flat surface to paint on. Now as it dries, uh, it will tighten even more and no matter how wet that gets, it will stay absolutely flat. It'll be perfect for painting on. And some watercolour uh, paintings, they do get really, really wet. And sometimes if you have the hills and the valleys and it's not stretched, then it can cause problems when you're painting. Uh, so this, no matter how wet uh, it gets, will stay dead flat. Some people use uh, tape, uh, masking tape or, or um, uh, something similar to tape a piece of paper to a board. That's not stretching it. You can use uh, old-fashioned uh, brown uh, gum strip on a wooden board, but at some stage you've got to scrape it all off again, which is a real pain, like scraping off old wallpaper. This is a lot easier. It's dead simple. So uh, that's it ready. You can either uh, you can either uh, paint on it straight away if you're working wet and wet, or if you want to draw on it, then you'd need to let it dry first of all, so you could dry it with a hairdryer. Uh, it doesn't really matter. So that's ready for painting on. Down here, in true form, I've got one that uh, was uh, prepared earlier and I've painted a picture on it. And this is ready for coming off the board. Um, so what I usually do uh, is uh, put um, a craft knife or a, a scalpel, a very sharp blade, in between the uh, paper and the board. You can, if you want to, uh, just uh, instead of doing it that way, you can tease the um, uh, plastic uh, out of the grooves. You can see on each of the four sides there's a groove there. Uh, you can tease it out and prise it off the, uh, the paper stretcher. Um, I think it's a bit easier if you're careful just to get a knife like this. Just go all the way around on the four sides. You've just got to remember, of course, that you will lose a little bit of your picture, um, you know, if you're going to mount it. So 
you know, you'd lose about a quarter of an inch or so of the picture all the way around. So uh, make sure that when you do take it off, the picture's absolutely dry, because if it's slightly damp, then it will start to cockle and buckle again. So that is perfectly flat. And then all those are ready to stay uh, in there until I'm ready to stretch the next piece of paper. So there we are, job done. Thanks, Jeremy. It's really a simple way to stop your paper from distorting, cockling or buckling. Right, well, I'm afraid it's nearly time for us to pack away today's palette and paints. But before we go, we've just got time to dip into the Splashy Paint post bag to solve a few more of your artistic dilemmas. Seema Edwards has emailed in to ask, what is the best way to use gum arabic? Is it mixed with the wash or added to the painting after the paint has been put to the paper? Gum arabic is something I use quite a lot of, and for me it's nice for giving the gloss and a shine to the actual watercolour. There's two ways to use it. The most common way is to mix it with your paint. This prevents the actual gum arabic from cracking when it dries. But to be honest, I've been laying washes of transparent gum arabic over the top of paint to give like a raindrop effect or like a little drop of water on a, a petal or even over a, a rock in a seascape where the water's washed over it. And it doesn't really crack that much. I've never really seen it as an issue, but experiment with it and see how it works for you. On different papers, it will work differently. But the best way to use it is to mix it with your colour at the point of painting. The downside to this, it will slow down the flow of the watercolour, so bear that in mind. But apart from that, it's a good medium to use for watercolour painting. And finally, Paul Sheldon has been in touch to ask, I have a problem painting rivers and lakes as they always seem to go uphill. Can you help? Well, this is actually a common problem. I see this quite a lot with students. And the basic rule is, when you paint water, I mean, water's clear, but you put reflections into it. So you put a vertical reflection and a perfect horizontal ripple over the top, and this makes water work extremely well. But sometimes people go down the route of actually following the angle of the um, banking edge, if you like, and that's the mistake always. Even if it doesn't look to be horizontal, always paint it in horizontal lines. And to give you a quick example of this, if I just use a size 10 or 12 round brush, I'm just going to dampen this little area on this little snow scene. I'll follow the edge quite precisely. Just move over this side as well. So I've wet me water, if you like, and then move to a small brush. I always tend to put like a blue wash on first because it just glazes it. And if you do this in perfect horizontal lines, even if you don't think, if you look at the water itself in nature, you'll see it going at all angles, but actually on a painting, it's got to be horizontal. So at this point, keep your lines horizontal and that'll make it look as though the water is actually nice and straight. And I'll do the same over that side as well. Just put a few horizontal lines coming across there. So already you can see the water looks flat, and that is the trick. And then what we do is we actually pick up some of the surrounding colours, which we could say, in this one would be the brownie colour of the trees, and we can drop some downward brush strokes for this, following the edge where they actually reflect, and also following the edges to come down over there. All this is done while the paper's damp. There we go. And then really the finishing touch is to use a bit of a grey. I'm using natural grey. You can mix this from your primary colours. Try and avoid using Payne's grey, as we've mentioned in the past, and just do horizontal lines. Again, keep those lines nice and horizontal just to give you the flatness to water. But if you think about it, if you painted your water like this, as it sometimes appears, or sometimes it appears to go that way, it's going to look like a ramp or a slope. So I hope that's helped you there, Paul, and hopefully it gives you a basic idea of how water should always be horizontal. Well, that's about all the time we've got today, folks. But remember, for more inspirational advice and top tips to support you on your artistic journey, visit www.saa.co.uk or email us at splashofpaint at saa.co.uk and we'll do our very best to help. Join us next time when Mike Skidmore demonstrates how to use oils to paint realistic skin tones and Sharon Hurst shares her top tips for tidying up the edges on your watercolour paintings and we throw the introducing spotlight onto another up and coming SAA professional artist, Claire Warner. So tune in next time for more from A Splash of Paint.
If you'd like to receive a regular splash of paint, sign up to the SAA's free e-newsletter. Visit www.saa.co.uk and we'll make sure you get all the latest news, exclusive offers and events delivered direct to your desktop. <laughs>